In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is so easy. It's so easy to listen to today's scripture readings and to shake our heads in judgment or disbelief. How? How could the ancient Israelites mess things up so much? How could they worship a golden calf after all that the living God had done for them as they escaped from slavery in Egypt? It's so easy to read today's first reading and to pass judgment. And how? How could the leaders of Jesus' day mess things up so completely as well? How could they fail to see that their Heavenly Father was at work in Jesus? It is so easy to read today's Gospel and to pass judgment. It's so easy. Think about today's first reading again. It's a dramatic scene, isn't it? Moses is coming down the mountain carrying with him the tablets of the commandments. And the people at the bottom of the hill are going to get in very big trouble. They are worshipping the golden calf. If you've seen the movie, The Ten Commandments, you know that this is a primitive and unsophisticated scene. Imagine the people of Israel kneeling before a golden calf, bending their knee to an idol of their own making. It's a primitive scene. But doesn't it still happen today? Maybe we should pause before we shake our heads at such folly, and maybe we should ask ourselves whether or not we still make the same mistake. After all, I do think that idolatry is still one of our primary sins. Perhaps we've become a bit more um, sophisticated in the idols that we worship, but they are idols nonetheless. Instead of a golden calf, in the 21st century, we worship idols with different names. We worship idols called celebrity, power, success, prestige, control, self-righteousness, self-indulgence, luxury, lust, materialism, nationalism, political party. Our gods are called by different names. Some of us worship gods called the bottle, the drug, the job. We may not physically bend our knee to them. All we do is devote our whole life to them while we neglect the one true God and the people that God has placed in our lives to love. There is only one God. And yes, it's easy to scoff at the ancient Israelites who forgot that in that moment, but it is much harder to look at my life and to see where I commit the sin of idolatry. And yes, it's easy to scoff at the religious leaders in today's Gospel. They had the living God standing right before them in the person of Jesus, but they failed to see that. But let's ask ourselves, don't we make the same mistake? Isn't Christ always in front of me, inviting a response from me? And don't I miss him much of the time? Do I play around the fringes of my faith, making sure that my core convictions remain untouched by the gospel? Do I still fail to see Jesus? Does that make me shake my head at all? Way back in the 4th century, St. Jerome undertook one of the greatest projects in the history of Christianity. He traveled to the Holy Land and he learned the ancient languages from the rabbis and other teachers so that he could translate the Bible into Latin from the original languages so that more and more people could read the Word of God. Once he learned the ancient languages, he started the long, difficult task of translation into Latin. But he was not simply doing translation. He was taking the words of Scripture to heart. 
He understood that this was more than a text that needed to be translated. St. Jerome understood that this is the living word of God. He wrote a letter to a friend of his at the time, and he told his friend that on some days he simply couldn't get any of the translation work done. Why not? It wasn't because he was tired. It wasn't because he had a headache. And it wasn't because his eyes were sore. In his letter, St. Jerome said that some days he had to put down his biblical translation work because there were needy people at the door who needed to be taken care of. St. Jerome not only translated the scriptures, he put the scriptures into practice, even if that meant every now and then that he stopped writing about Christ and instead served Christ in the people who came to his door. Do we see the living God? Do we recognize Christ when he's knocking on the door? He still comes to us, especially in the poor and the needy who need our care. In the past, some people failed to see him. Are we any different 